Good morning, guys. So this is the second part of the Emperor's New Clothes. I apologize that I didn't get it out yesterday. So I'm a smidge late, but I don't think you guys will mind that much. So where we left off in part one, we had this emperor that we said is kind of like a king. And he is obsessed with clothes, okay? He spends most of his time in the closet picking out what he's going to wear that day. He will pay anything to get new clothes. He needs to be the most fashionable. He needs to be the one everybody looks at. And he hears about these swindlers, but he doesn't know they're swindlers, right? And we said that swindlers are like cheating workers. They're people that are trying to con money out of people, right? So he hears about them that they're opening a weaving business, which is the people that make clothes, right? And they tell him that they have the most magical clothes in the world, that they can only be seen by people that are smart enough and people that are correct for their position right? So if you are stupid or if you're in the wrong job, you can't see them. Now, the thing is, we know that they're not telling the truth, which is an example of something called dramatic irony, okay? When the reader knows something that the characters do not know, that is something called dramatic irony, okay? Versus regular irony, which is when the opposite of what we expect to happen happens, okay? So stories where we know and the characters don't is dramatic irony. So for example, when we had been talking about something like The Lion King, when we knew that Scar had killed Mufasa, but the other characters didn't know, that is dramatic irony, okay? When we were reading Hamlet, when we knew that Hamlet was faking it to try to catch his uncle, but the other characters didn't know they thought he was really going crazy, that is dramatic irony, okay? So your example of dramatic irony for today is that we know that the weavers are cheating. We know that they're liars, okay? But the people in the kingdom believe that they have this magical cloth, right? So the king pays them a lot of money. He's buying them thread. He's buying them silk. He's buying them everything that they say that they want to make him this, these clothes, right? And where we left off, he said he was going to send somebody to go see what it looks like because he didn't want to go himself because he was kind of a little bit afraid that he might not be able to see it and then he would either be stupid or be unfit to be emperor so his way of dealing with that anxiety was says somebody else to look so he thinks to himself i'll send my honest old minister to the weavers the emperor decided he'll be the best one to tell me how the material looks for he's a sensible man and nobody does his duty better. So he sends the weaver because he believes that the weaver wouldn't, I'm sorry, he doesn't send the weaver. I'm sorry. That was, Iris got in the way. He sends the minister because he says he is an honest man and nobody does his job better. So he doesn't think that the minister will lie to him. So any thinks the minister will have to be able to see these clothes. He's smart. He's the best guy for the job. He will, of course, be able to see this. Okay, so he sends this guy. So the honest old minister went to the room where the two swindlers sat working away at their empty loom. Heaven help me, he thought, as his eyes flew wide open. I can't see anything at all. But he did not say so. Both the swindlers begged him to be so kind as to come nearer to approve the excellent pattern, the beautiful colors. They pointed to the empty looms and the poor old minister stared as hard as he dared. He couldn't see anything because there was nothing to see. Heaven have mercy, he thought. Can it be that I'm a fool? I had never guessed it. And not a soul must know. Am I unfit to be the minister? It would never do to let that on, that I can't see the cloth. So he says that he's, it would never do to let that, to let on that I can't see the cloth. So it would never do to tell anyone that I can't see it. And one of your questions is why? Why does he not tell the truth about that? I apologize that Iris is all in and out. Don't hesitate to tell us what you think of it, said one of the weavers. Oh, it's beautiful. It's enchanting, 
The old minister peered through his spectacles. Such a pattern, what colors! I'll be sure to tell the emperor how delighted I am with it. We're pleased to hear that, the swindlers said. They proceeded to name all the colors and to explain the intricate pattern. The old minister paid the closest attention so that he could tell it all to the emperor. And so he did. So as the swindlers tell what colors they used and what pattern it is, he kind of listens really carefully so that he can repeat that. It looked like he had seen it, right? The swindlers at once asked for more money, more silk and gold thread to get on with the weaving. But it all went into their pockets. Not a thread went into the looms, though they worked at their weaving as hard as ever. The emperor presently sent another trustworthy official to see how the work progressed and how soon it would be ready. The same thing happened to him that happened to the minister. He looked and he looked, but there was nothing to see in the looms and he couldn't see anything. Isn't it a beautiful piece of goods? The swindlers asked him as they displayed and described their imaginary pattern. I know I'm not stupid, the man thought. So it must be that I'm unworthy of my good office. That's strange. I mustn't let anyone find it out, though. So he praised the material he did not see. He declared he was delighted with the beautiful colors and the exquisite pattern. To the emperor, he said, it had me, it held me spellbound. So at this point, the emperor has sent two different people to go look at this cloth. Now it also tells us something about the emperor that he won't go himself, right? The emperor is a little bit anxious about if he will be able to see it, which shows that he either is not sure that he's smart enough or he's not sure that he's fit to be emperor, which tells us that he is somewhat self-conscious, right? So that's interesting about this guy that's obsessed with how he looks. All he cares about is clothes. All he cares about is how he looks. He spends all of his time in the dressing rooms, right? And you would think he'd be super confident because that's what we like to think about people that care about their looks that much. We like to think that these well-dressed, rich, beautiful people are super confident. But what he's showing us is also that there is a level of kind of self-esteem issues going on there, right? That he really isn't 100% kind of okay with himself because he won't go look at it. If he was as confident as he pretends that he is, he should be 100% sure that he'd be able to see it and have no problem going in. Okay. So now that we read together, you're going to go and answer your six questions. I think I said five before, but I think it's six. And then we can talk. Okay, I hope that you are enjoying the story. I also hope that Iris was not too distracting because she would not leave the computer alone. If you ever have any problems, you just send me a message. If you need any more time, you send me a message and have a wonderful day.